Corley Moore, talking to you for a few short minutes while we're waiting for the scrap to begin. The scrap will be starting here in just a few minutes, and I'm going to talk to you while everybody's logging in. I'm going to talk to you about becoming a vigilante. If you are not a vigilante, why not? It is a collection of the coolest cats from across the the world, firefighters from around the world getting together in a group and supporting each other. It's an amazing group to be a part of. Every day, people are posting their questions, their problems, their advice. It is powerful to belong to. One of the best collections of people, and you can be a part of it. We got stuff like the the swag. The swag is awesome. Don't get me wrong. The swag is awesome. That's not what it's about, but you got vigilante-only swag, like the, the custom bookmarks made by Taylor's Tins. For the vigilantes, you got stuff like the the blacked out vigilante hats and the vigilante shirts, all available in the exclusive vigilante only shop, which uh, all of that stuff is sold. Not I don't want to say at no markup, but like at the lowest possible price you can basically sell it for. And so and it's not even about the swag, although that's just that's just the awesome part of it. we do forums. We're on forum number 13 or 14. It's coming up. And it is some of the best, most uh, gifted subject matter experts coming in and they have conversations. It's like a scrap. Think of the scrap, but you're in it also in the call, able to ask and have conversations and talk. It's, a, it's an amazing time. We do. Uh, I've got the fourth episode of the Fire Away. Fire Away coming up uh, this month. And in a fire way, I go live and just field questions. People post questions, field questions, and we answer and discuss those questions from firefighters across the world. It's a good time. The fire ways, the forums, it's an amazing time. Not to mention, the, every time uh, there's a conference and vigilantes get together, we, we have a vigilante meetup. We're, we're forming we're in the process of forming traditions that are gonna that are gonna make and uh, how those how those happen and what it means when you hit, when you get like your vigilante coin, which is also another thing that's pretty pretty freaking cool is the vigilante coin, the blackout coin. And they're numbered, they're exclusive, and we're figuring out how that's gonna work out when we get together uh, in person. We have and we, we're supposed to recite the creed. We do this for others: push, train, learn, master ourselves. Never easy. Never quit. Man, if you're not a member of the Vigilantes, I'm just asking you, why not? I wanted to talk to you for a few minutes while the scrap is about to start. You can go to firehousevigilance.com. Five bucks a month. You are a member of the Vigilantes. You can also sign up for a year if you prefer that over the subscription. Firehousevigilance.com. Become a member today, man. You will not regret it. The scrap will be starting soon. Thanks for listening to me. <laughs> Corley Moore, Firehouse Vigilance. It is weekly scrap number 219. This is a first for me and a first for the scrap because we have never had a co host before. And after tonight's uh, shenanigans, may never again. Uh, he is always lurking on the scrap, finding your questions. But tonight, he is in my city. So tonight, Kyle Romagus is co hosting the scrap. Glad to be here, man. I'm stoked. <laughs> Tonight's guest is the one and only Captain Ron Smith. He is a 32-year veteran of the fire service, having served the last 25 years with the Gary, Indiana Fire Department, where he serves as the company commander at Squad 4. Ron has worked for volunteer, combination, and career departments. He is an instructor for the Indiana Firefighter Training System and instructs at schools and conferences around the United States. He's a field staff instructor for the IFSI at the University of Illinois, Ron is a current member of the UL FSRI technical panel for search and size up. I have been looking forward to this one for a while, and it is my absolute pleasure to have you on as the guest of Weekly Scrap number 219. Welcome, my brother, Ron that's Smith. My, that's my pleasure, man. And uh, 219 is also the area code I'm representing, so uh, that was very fitting. An accident, I'm sure, but uh, still. Everything's planned. Everything's yeah. planned. <laughs> right. I was waiting. Is there anything I missed? Anything you would like to add to the intro? 
Mm, not that I can think of. I, you know, I have uh, three lovely kids, one one grown adult, and then uh, two on their way so, to being adults. But and a lovely wife who supports me. Solid. Uh, is currently supporting me, watching the kids, you know. Audience, get your questions primed and ready for Ron. I usually tell you at this point that Kyle is in the chat, lurking and ready to grab your questions. But you don't have to worry about it right now. You can see his face. Uh, we're going to have some fun. Right, let's get the sponsor so we can get to the scrap. First off, the OG sponsor of the scrap, Keyhose. Check them online at keyhose.com. Follow them on Facebook, Keyhose. Affordable Drill Towers, home of the Affordable Drill Tower, the Affordable Standpipe Prop, and introducing the all-new Affordable Bailout Prop. Firefighter owned and operated, you can pump and roll using the Affordable Standpipe Prop. The Affordable Standpipe Prop fits through most classroom doorways for standpipe theory, and then you roll it out into the parking lot and pump for realistic flows and pressures. It comes with up to seven standpipe valves that can be upgraded to BRVs or customized. Call Steve, 844-55-TOWER, or drop an email to info at affordabledrilltowers.com. Firefighter safety and accountability starts with being able to quickly find and identify individual firefighters operating on the fire ground. Identifier safety combines the best in photoluminescent materials for durable firefighter identification solutions that can glow for up to 20 hours with no switches, no batteries, which means being able to rapidly identify firefighters by name, unit, or assignment, even under hot fire conditions, all specifically designed and tested for the rigors of the job. Be seen on scene, identifiersafety.com. And of course, I love Flame Decon. So all that being said, we're ready to start the scrap. My brother Kyle? Yeah, man, I'm ready. I'm stoked. Ron? Here in OG I'm Ron. ready, man. All right. Ready to go. I cannot have Ron Smith on the scrap and not talk first and foremost about training seconds. <laughs> so let's just, let's kick it off there. And I, I just want to, where did it start from? Uh, well, it started, uh, I do a uh, class in Ohio, the Ohio State Fire School uh, in Bowling Green, Ohio, with uh, JJ Champ, uh, Steve Robertson, uh, Paul Oxima, Ryan Marshauser, a bunch of guys. Uh, Ed Farley and the late uh, Jimmy Ellis. Um, but you know, I was talking. We we were having some cocktails, and I was telling Champ. I said it's kind of funny, man. Bobby Halton never calls me to do training minutes. I think I'm just going to do training seconds. <laughs> and uh, I did one. You know, just joking around. We were we had an acquired structure in Toledo, and I had this kid running a saw, and I was just talking. You know. Just move my lips, really. I wasn't saying anything. And then when he shut it off, I said, training seconds. And uh, it just it stayed in the circle. For, it, it was in the circle for the whole year. Then the next year, we go back. And um, there's a young guy. Uh, we're cutting metal bars on an acquired structure. And it there was an exposed stud bay. And it lit the uh, rock wall insulation on fire. And he was he was really wanting to put it out and i was like it's okay man it's it's not going anywhere he's like he had the water can he really really wanted to put it out so uh <laughs> i you know i was telling him not to panic but then and when they went to lunch i did a training seconds you know if you get a fire in a stud bay put it out and that was it and then <laughs> and then i had i had steve robertson backing me up on the water can that's the that's the the picture that's on the 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 uh, on the top of the, the page and uh, then i just went around the house just filming a whole bunch of different training seconds you know shut off the gas turn off the <laughs> turn off the breaker and then i got to the front and i did the alley apple ventilation one which is has been it's probably one of the biggest uh biggest hits anyway um because <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny to me it's um but i so then i just while we were there like I, they were all on lunch i did about eight or ten of them and then uh made the website you know made the facebook page and then uploaded one and it's here we are you know eleven thousand fans later <laughs> right on which is crazy to me no i absolutely love it man uh no, and and like you said, the apple, uh, the the training training second, and and the and the great byline training seconds. Yeah, right. 
Right. It, it, you know, it captures the attention of the youth, man. That's where it's at. Is you know. That's what I want to know. Do you have a, do you have a favorite training seconds that you filmed? I, I would think the, uh, <laughs> the, the alley apple is is a good one. Um, the one where Champ is in it, and uh, we were going. You know, I was trying to figure out. We had this another required structure, but um, I was trying to figure out a way to do it with him. He's like, I'll just say, you know, I'll start off, you know, training minutes with Mike Champo, and uh, and I'll push him out of the way and say, no, no, he's got time for that. And so the first take, you know, I was like, I, I think I think Robertson was holding the the camera, and I. Was, so I was like, okay, I'm in frame here. And then, you know, Mike's in frame and we, you know, kind of did a run through and stuff. And so then he, he started and I pushed him. I, I mean, I gently pushed him out of the way and he did like this prat fall, you know, and I was shocked. I was like, what? <laughs> I thought I might break his hip or something, but um, so that, that kind of stayed in. I, I, I had to reshoot it obviously. Cause I was dumbfounded because he, you know, he, he fell down, but, um, but that's a, another good one, you know? For him right. being such a good sport, and then um, uh, Chief uh, Bob Hoff, uh, former commissioner of Chicago Fire Department, did the one where he was cleaning the toilet. You know, never forget where he came from. That was a pretty good one too. A uh, couple guest spots that were good, but yeah, it, I mean, I love them, most of them. Anything that I put on the internet, I like because I, I've, I've filmed almost thousands of them, and I don't put them up there because I don't think they're funny. Right. That's all, that was my next question is how many, uh, how long have you been doing it? How many have you filmed? I think this is the fourth year, I think. And I, I don't know. I don't even know how many I've filmed. I don't even know how many are up actually. I don't know. Right. No, I get it. And uh, like, what's the percentage would you guess on the ones that meet runs <laughs> your, your requirement for, for posting? <laughs> well, I think 100% of the ones that are up. <laughs> <I'm not very laughs> <far. laughs> i have some that i haven't put up i have a couple and so like um i don't i don't um i don't enjoy mean jokes i typically try not to hurt people's feelings i you know i like things that are funny but not at someone else's expense so i filmed a couple of them that i was like nah that sounds mean you know I, <laughs> someone's gonna think i'm targeting them when i'm really not i would never I would never do that, you know. So, which leads me to my question. Final question on training seconds. Uh, what is the one you wish you could make that you haven't made yet? Like, there, there's oh. one that... Oh, there's so many. There's so many. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't, I don't have the production team to do it. You know, there, there's just so many of them. Uh, there's, I, I can't think of one that I want to do that that I would want to let out anyway, you know. Um, okay. There's there's a few, though. I mean, there, there's a bunch of them that if I could, you know, if I could have... If I could up the production value, have a you know a team, uh, you know that would be cool. But I don't have you know the, our current budget is zero dollars and right, and we've exceeded that so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, everybody listening. If you know someone who wants to work for zero dollars but has a high creativity and wants to belong to a production team, then reach out and be part of Training Seconds. Absolutely. Can Can you imagine the prestige that you'll get by being on the team? <laughs> I love it. So let's let us let us let us let us shift gears. I'm moving to the UL FSRI search and size up study that you are a part of, and uh, yeah, just basically talk about being involved in that. Your takeaways, uh, man, it's such a broad topic. So I don't know where you want to start with it. It it is well uh, the, I mean, it was a great um, opportunity to to be on the inside of that. It was it was really awesome, really really awesome. Um, the there were, you know, there was there wasn't any surprises in my particular instance. I, I mean, I knew that you know smoke is bad, um, time time to fresh air is good, you know, all that stuff. And I I said that in the beginning, um, but um, you know, the uh, just the opportunity to to network and to bounce ideas off of those guys was was awesome. Um, I wish I could have been involved in more stuff uh, because of COVID. We didn't get to meet. We met one time and then COVID hit and we were never able to meet the whole group again. So it was, uh, we would go for some of the burns and um, there would just be a few people there, you know, and that was, that was the downside of it. Right. Just the, the lack of ability to be together for it. Yeah. Which yeah. is kind of a microcosm of society. 
at the same time. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We, and we did, you know, we did a couple, you know, online uh, meetings and, um, you know, we were disseminating information over the internet, but it still wasn't the same as being in the same room with sure. all the guys and, and being able to talk to them about, you know, the findings and things like that. Just building off those relationships. Uh, like you already said, there was no big surprise. Was there anything, uh, anything that surprised you, not necessarily in the findings or in the direction, but just being a part of it? Uh, mm, no, th like some of the findings, the, um, uh, the, the amount of dose between floor level and even at one foot and then three foot is, is amazing. Uh, that was, um, that wasn't something I expected. Okay. Um, and then, well, yeah, that was, that was really about it. That was about the only thing, you know, just, just, um, and then we, you know, going forward from that, using that information, we do have to fit, uh, change how we drag people, you know, like the, the, um, the old, um, combat challenge way of getting under their arms and picking them up into the atmosphere is, is pretty bad uh, if they're breathing. And that was enough for you. And uh, like saying, if they're breathing, this is something that should not happen just because of the actual data, the actual scientific measurements. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, any victim I've ever came across, I didn't check to see if they're breathing. I just like, oh, <laughs> they got to get outside, you know. So um, either they were, you know, beyond help or uh, they just went outside immediately. So that it didn't really change anything on that. But um, would it, you know, would it did it and, and just being involved in it? Did it change the way you teach? uh drag yeah. etc yeah yeah when I, I mean i do talk about that uh more okay. more so now because uh we did you know any any time that we would teach we just taught what we what we were taught and what we you know have always been you know it's in the books right so <laughs> and then you see it um again the the amount of time you see people dragging somebody or d the dummy in the firefighter combat challenge is that is it's extreme i mean you don't see people dragging victims that much. So that's kind of, you know, embedded in your brain. Sure. Too. So. And if it's in the books, it can't be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and just a side note to that, since you, since you brought that up um, in 2013, we switched Indiana switched to the fire engineering manual for firefighter one and two. And I never had to say, Oh, uh, that's the way we do it in the book, but this is the way we do it on the street. It was the, I call them the golden years, but then we switched back to EFSA, so we're back to back to the old uh, the old ways. Back to the two two methods of two methods of training. Yeah, yeah, this is what we do in the academy, and this is what we do on the street. It, so, I mean, it's not that bad. I'm, I'm you know, I know, I know, it, it's legitimate. It's not, it's not like we're making it up. It, there is a d disconnect. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No. And, and it, yeah, I'm not trying to put, uh, believe me, I'm not trying to put you on the spot with it, but yeah, we, we wouldn't, uh, we have to bridge the gap in some way, shape or form. Yeah. In fact, I sat in Kyle's class today, which is why he's here teaching the class to my department about the disconnect between the academies, the state academies, the funded academies and the fire ground. Yeah, I don't, I mean, that's, I think that's always going to be there. I just don't think that there's a way to, um, to completely eradicate that i really don't i mean there's enough you know just like you said kyle talks about it i talk about it a lot of people talk about it there's enough material there that people have a whole class on you know going from the academy to the to the firehouse floor so uh, i don't think that we're gonna ever gonna get away from it but um as long as we can kind of um you know make our little changes in the sure. academy because you don't have to do it by the if it's a standard in indiana anyway as long as you as long as you meet the requirements right no no 100 percent. and and it's good to have the discussions and say hey this is reality and this is how we're going to address it it's not just bitching and moaning and complaining with no answer it is saying this is the reality and we're going to address it yep i love it man yeah the fire engineering book was very underrated by oh yeah, like I said, we adopted it statewide for I think it was um, seven years. Of, I mean, it was it was awesome. It was awesome. But yeah. for those of you that don't know, the chapters were written by subject matter experts instead of a committee. So like Jay Camilla and um, Dennis Laguerre, Shoop, you know, all those Champo, you know, wrote the latter chapter. 
forcible entry, you know, so very underrated. Is the what, what's the name of the book? It's uh, uh, oh man, fire engineering's uh, now you put me on the spot. Sorry, right? sorry, on the spot. Stand I by. have one upstairs, <laughs> yeah, put on the spot. Kyle's on yeah. it. We'll find out the name of the book. Yeah, find the name of the book, Kyle. Well, I'm on it, and I'm asking because this is this is a my ignorance speaking. So 100, I'm just speaking from ignorance. So I'm not trying to put anybody on the spot. I'm saying what? Why did we? What was the push to go back? Was it strictly the the same old same old money money money? Well, that's the easy way out to tell okay. you the truth. I mean, uh, and that's what I that's what I you know shot off with first. You know, it's like right. oh, somebody's getting some money, but um, the truth is it. It wasn't updated, and I don't think there, it needed a lot of update, but that's what they said at the state level. And then there was also some offering of LMS uh, with the purchase. And then um, we did get, uh, and you know, to, uh, to not disparage IFSA completely, they did offer, uh, like for the state of Indiana, you can get any IFSA publication if you're, if you're a firefighter state of indiana for free okay okay so so there was there was some you know there were some trade-offs and there you know yeah absolutely and and not even a not even a rabbit trail i meant to chase down but it was great it was great i love it uh <laughs> it's fire engineering that's what happened firefighter one and two came out in 2019 and the 19th edition is what it's called but uh, Ron's absolutely right. You know, the credentialing programs, the the states want, they want new books. And even if they change one sentence in a chapter, they can put out a new edition, you know, and that's one of the biggest problems. But as he said, there's a lot of those chapters that don't need to be written, rewritten. No, no, there was a lot of really good stuff in there. Um, you know, um, I, I fall back to the ladders cause I've always taught ladders, you know, around here. So, um, there's really nothing, nothing that's bad in there and you know we can we don't have to um because we don't have manpower for i mean bottom line we don't have manpower so um I, you know when i'm going over a two-person ladder you know 24 foot extension ladder carry it just doesn't really apply and then uh, and then when you teach it then people do it so and then, and then you know someone's going to say well you have to teach it because it's in the book and then and then you know you start getting people doing it right yeah fire streams was jay camilla and jeff shoot basic fire attack was jerry knapp and chris flatley uh traditions and mission rick lasky uh fire service history by don cannon uh john best uh what we got here yeah Anyway, it's all subject matter experts. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely, definitely. It's all, it's all on the bro drive uh, as well for at risk of being sued again by the, <laughs> the big guys. <laughs> you guys. So, they're, they're trying to teach you a lesson, Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk uh, BES. Yeah. Fan, so. <laughs> I'm a fan. Like I always ask people for, I always ask people for, for topics to talk about. And I got back not a fan of VES. And I want to say, I want to say, I want, I let's hear, I want to hear the, the, the training seconds behind this. I, uh, <laughs> it's not training seconds. This is legit. So, okay. Um, so it start. you know, you know, you call it the weekly scrap. So, you know, I came in here ready to knuckle up. So, um, <laughs> I, uh, when, I first went to the very first meeting that we had, or the only in-person meeting we had with uh, UL. Uh, they were going over all the previous studies they had, you know, fire attack, water, you know, water application, um, exterior water, sure, vertical ventilation, horizontal ventilation. And so one of the very first slides that they put up said that it said uh, forcible entry is ventilation. So um i did learn ves or that that tactic uh before i knew that there was an acronym for it so and we were doing it we we did it a lot from the back door so you know the engine company or two was going in the front door we'd slip around the back open up the you know back side soften the, the charlie side and then conduct our search from there right so forcible entry is ventilation 
you know, you step across the threshold that you've entered the building. And then if you look around, you've done a search, right? So every everyone has done VES from the front door, from the back door. You can do it from windows and porches. Porches is a favorite, you know, but um, for that second floor window. But it's really just an acronym. And then the the plus side of this argument that I'm posing is that uh, all those chiefs that say are the safety officers that tell you that ves is dangerous you just tell them hey i'm not doing that what i'm doing is a search i'm just going in the window (laughs) and then then someone brought up and if you look in the literature it's it's um it's listed as a window initiated search and i I don't want another acronym please don't you know don't make me be the originator of another acronym (laughs) i want to do away with acronyms so um I, you know, and I said that and I was adamant about it. And, you know, um, Eric Wheaton was on the panel who runs the VES website. And I said, sorry, Eric, you know, you gotta, you gotta come up with a different domain name or something. (laughs) But, um, but it's, it's, it's a great tactic, you know, but it's a, you know, when, when I say I hate VES, people are like, what? But I just don't like the, uh, because, um, realistically you know again when you break it down when i was taught again the way i was taught and the the way the acronym was relayed to me was open the window you know take the window let it blow see what happens and then you go in and that was the that was the idea behind ves and then you know now we know that the ventilation isn't very good because if that door is open and there's a victim in there now we're we're at the flow path across them we're you know we're radiating heat to them but um so that and and then again in the in the search panel you know discussions and the findings uh it's bad ventilation is bad uh, oh back to that the one thing that did surprise me there is a uh they they had a door that was burnt almost all the way off and they closed what was left of it and it actually changed the conditions in the room even that just a little bit and you have to think about that even if you're um, remember when we were taught ventilation from you know when i was taught ventilation back in uh the early 90s um they said you know take the screen out because the screen hampers 50 percent of the ventilation well it's the same thing if you close half a door right yeah close half a door it's 50 percent of the ventilation that it was getting and then, um, uh, so so we don't want that. We may want the exhaust out of that room, but we don't want to exhaust the rest of the building through that room out the window. So then, you know, isolation. So if you want to put the I in the V-E-I-S, then um, you should actually be isolating all the time. And that's one of the things that I said. So um, my captain, when I first went to uh, truck four, he gave me a uh, a pair of vice grips that had a chain welded to it, and he said that since you know we're the inside team, we're going to conduct forcible entry. I want you to you know you put it on the doorknob, and when we force it, you pull it back shut so we don't have it just open you know with with no water. And that was a long time ago, right? So <laughs> uh, he was a little bit ahead of his time, I guess, or or he just knew something that wasn't in the book. Right on. No, and. Is it strictly just a, a lack of understanding of the basics of, 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 of flow path and ventilation and, and air movement, air tracks, if we want to go back all the way to Braidwood? Yeah, yeah is, right. Is, it, is that really what we're talking about? I think so. I mean, it's, it's one of those things that's it's kind of hard to um, – uh, it's, it's an old habit that's hard to break, right? I used to talk about when I would teach ventilation a long time ago before I knew about all the UL studies and things like that and flow path and didn't have words for the the stuff. Um, I would always talk about cop ventilation because there's, there's tons of times when it's happened to us where the cops, you know, break, you know, break open a door, break out a window, and then they stand in front and point at the house that's fully involved. Like there it is. (laughs) So I would, you know, that, that ventilation doesn't care if it's coming in from a window or a door or the roof. Um, and then <laughs> there was a little discussion in in Kansas. Uh, 
recently, not very long ago, I'll say that. Um, someone was talking about ventilation, like old school ventilation, like, oh, I know, you know, I know if I break these windows, it gets better. Well, um, when you see that, when you hear the windows breaking and you see the lift and you th like, things like that, that you kind of, um, without the big picture, you kind of relay that to the other members, right? So, oh, it got better when I heard the saw or when the windows started breaking. But uh, in fact, we know that ventilation has two components. It's not just exhaust, it's also the intake. So yeah. when it leaves, something's got to come in to replace it. And, and I think that a lot of old timers just thought about it as exhaust and it's, and it's not. So if we open up a bunch of stuff, it's going to get air in there too. And I think that, I think that a lot of people are starting to come around with, with that. Um, I think a lot more people are, are kind of pushing that whole flow path and the isolation thing. I really do. I mean, I could be wrong, but I mean, from my standpoint, I've seen a lot more, a lot more of that. Solid. All right. We got questions coming at you from the audience. Tony Nunez wants to know, question for all of you, do you think someone, anyone, will or is creating a real-world standards book that will ever get used? Well, um, I, the guys that I work with at IFSI are trying to come up with a legitimate engine manual, and um, it's going to be uh open source uh as much as possible <laughs> right right um is it is it uh right around the corner i don't think so not yet i would have to talk to the guy that's in charge of it but um i think that we're going in the right direction there's no absolutely nothing that um <clears throat> you know it's not sponsored by anybody there's nothing you know that's that's off the table there's nothing that um if it's if it's sound tactics, we're trying to get it in there. So, um, and we're using subject matter experts as well. So, um, I, I think that, that, that may, and I know that there's some people around not too far from me that are doing, um, something like that for their Academy. Uh, they're doing some more, you know, more realistic approach to the Academy training, but, um, I think that if we can get that engine manual out and it's well received, and especially if it's open source, um, that a lot of people may take that and, and go a step further, you know, maybe throw some other stuff in there, extrication and ladders and things like that. Right on, Kyle. I know you. that Fields has alluded to writing a manual for a while, like a manual to be produced and distributed, uh, Aaron Fields has. The biggest problem that we run into here is credentialing. You know, I mean, no matter what's produced, it's just like fire engineering. So like when fire engineering put their book out, it wasn't, you know, that it was fire engineering that put it out. It was that guys from the street wrote the chapters. That was the biggest draw to that book. You know, it wasn't about the fire engineering name on it. It was about the content that was involved in those chapters. And the problem is, is that the state still have to adopt it. So like Texas, for instance, never adopted the fire engineering manual. So I didn't have a choice to use it. It was only either if so or Jones and Bartlett. And that's the biggest problem with credentialing is that machine seems to be too big, you know, and we can't just say, you know, poo poo with this without a solution. And then like what you're talking about, Ron is, is bringing that solution. Yeah. The, um, so in the state of Indiana, it says, um, and I don't know the exact wording, but it's something like the, authority having jurisdiction um dictates the you know what's acceptable so uh, as long as they pass the test i think that uh, you can you can basically teach anything you want as far as i know because because there are people that are <laughs> <laughs> and i'm not talking about good stuff i'm talking about <laughs> right, right. <laughs> because because again that's that's a machine you know it's a big machine to get people that um you know, right. I've I've had I've had people that uh, that I've talked to that they graduate the fire academy and they say, well, I want to get my instructor cert. You know, it's like I think you should probably go to a couple of jobs or something. Maybe but, maybe catch a job. Yeah. <laughs> you start teaching, you know, maybe go on at least an EMS run or something. I don't know, but but they they do. I mean, you know, people and to be honest, 
I'm an instructor because I looked up the guy that that really inspired me was an instructor. So I get it. You know, you, you go through the academy and you get, you know, you get one instructor that's super fired up, super dialed in, you know, just super motivating. And then you want to be like them. And then you go and then you're not like them. <laughs> but, you know. No, I love it. Uh, Jake Deal wants to know, how long have you been captain on squad for? And what's your favorite part of working for Gary? Um, the that's a that's a two part question. Um, <laughs> I have been the captain of this. I have been the oh. captain at fours for three years, and we just put the squad in service or reinstated the squad um, a year ago, a little over a year ago. We just passed the one year mark. Um, so our, <clears throat> our squad, uh, crashed with, cause we had a big heavy rescue, um, only toolbox. Uh, it crashed with a truck going to a fire. So the, the, both rigs were totaled out. The, the squad actually flipped on its side, slid down the road. Oh, wow. And, uh, um, so that was never replaced. It was, uh, replaced with, um, we had a pumper for a while that, wouldn't pump so there was no hose on it and there was just like totes in the back right and i have a picture of the we put the the, the roof hooks in the uh, two and a half discharge in the back took the cap off slid them in there <laughs> and then <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then it, yeah and then it, it went to uh they they bought some uh they they bought two pickup trucks with the with the squad box on the back, you know, the Johnny and Roy style. And, sure. Um, it was pretty funny because I'm not going to say who it was, but they had a pickup truck four door cab and they put SCBA seats in the back and then they tried to sit in it and realized there's not enough room. In it. <laughs> 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 they had to take those out. Um, and then uh, and. And then they ran that uh, one piece for a while. And then uh, due to manpower shortages, they went, they, they were riding with two people and then it just went away, you know, just to, you know, just to brown it out, you know, and then uh, our last chief really wanted to get a heavy rescue back and uh, couldn't do it because uh, we would have had to, we had to had to close an engine for the staffing, right? Or, right. or just like all overtime, and there's right. no way that would have happened. So, um, he had uh, he had the idea. I don't know if it was his idea, but had the idea of getting a rescue pumper. So that's what we have. It. I don't know which way to go here. It's a mirror, um, but it's a pumper, but it's got a rescue body on it, and we and we carry, you know, rope rescue struts. Okay. Uh, you know, heavy rescue stuff. Um, and then we have the ability to uh, bring trench panels, hazmat trailer, all that thing, separate from the rig. Now, uh, my favorite part about working in Gary is, and I don't really know who y'all is going to see this thing, but um, <laughs> um, nobody. There's, there's a, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Hopefully not the chief, right? Um, <laughs> Ah, uh, the chief is pretty cool, actually. Uh, current chief, and then um, we're in the interim, right? We're we don't know what's going to happen. There's anymore. only like six chiefs in America that watch the scrap. You're safe. Oh, you never know, man. You never know, right? Because uh, the old chief, our old chief, would watch. He would. He's the kind of guy that would watch. But um, anyway, um, it's it's a really good place to work because there's there's a lot of fires, and you do a lot of fire duty per run. Like um, we had. Not it wasn't very long ago, just a couple weeks ago, we had a day where we had two runs, the whole shift, and it was two pin jobs. And then a couple days later, we had a, a day where we only had two runs, and they were both working fires. Nice. So we do pretty good, uh, you know, per person, and still. And then um, <laughs> it's not the best thing about working there, but um, we only send two engines in a truck to a fire. And that's all three people that are on it. And so for right now, we're still operating as an engine. So on an assignment, we'll go as an engine. So there's only nine people working at a fire. So you get plenty of a lot of work, you know, plenty of work. You know, yeah. I was joking about the, you know, 
Gary rehab is putting your hands on your knees while somebody changes your bottle and then you go back in. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and two, three bottles is not unusual. Right. And then, and then we get, um, and it's really kind of tapered off. But um, when I started, we, it was phenomenal work. I mean, uh, like I said, I, I don't really think, and a lot of times, you know, it is um, rubbish. It's a vacant that's, you know, fallen down and we just surround it and, you know, be better off just putting one engine there and not even putting any water on it. But um, the, the, um, the amount of work, like uh, I, it's, it's going to sound like an exaggeration, but um, in, I think it was 2000 or 2001, I, when I attended 37 working fires in one month, it was, it was insane. Like we were going to three a day. It was three or four a day. Okay. And then I have a video, <laughs> I have a video. It was a, it's like two years now. Um, two years ago, there was a guy that was running around lighting fires and there was like 20, 22 structures at, at, at one, basically at once. Um, so the video is, uh, is uh, our rig that's in a spare goes by and then a mutual aid ladder goes by and then the chief goes by and then the guy pans over to the house so that they pass and it's just, it's just ripping. I mean, a whole place is blazing <laughs> Dude, and they just go right past it. And he's like, yeah, it's, it must be going to a fire down the block right? because <laughs> there was no exposure and there was no people in there. So they just kept going. Right. Um, oh man, what a great! I mean, what a and it's the only job I know in the world where I can be like, oh, two fires and one shift, great! That's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. You know, <laughs> yeah, well, yes. Wish I was there. Yeah, don't tell the civilians that. Right. No. <laughs> yeah. Not not for the loss of property or anything like that or anything, but man, if it's gonna happen, we want to be there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And that's I mean that's really why I went there. I used to ride. I, I worked uh, across the state in a suburban department, a combo job, uh, one station. And I used to ride everywhere. I used to go to Gary and ride Chicago. I'd go to Detroit all the time. They, Detroit had like an on-the-job training program. You filled out some paperwork, proved that you had insurance, and your chief signed off. And you were just like, you know, they were you were like the trial man. They would, you know, they would give you the nozzle, like whatever. They didn't care. So I had a ton of fun, and and I, you know, almost I almost got a job at this very small department. And then I, that was like, I, it was down, there was one spot and I was, me and another guy were in competition for this spot and he got it. And I was like, man, I probably would have been miserable there anyway. So I just wanted to work someplace that was really busy. I just wanted fire duty, you know? So, um, you know, Chicago, Detroit, Toledo, Indy, and then and Gary just hired me first. That's all. But, um, and again, I hope the chief's not watching, but. Um, we don't have a lot of rules. Like there's, uh, I mean, I can't say it on the, on the internet, but a lot of guys have gotten away with a lot of stuff <laughs> and, 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 you know, we, we do have the ability. And so again, I do have the ability to do kind of experiment, you know, like with, you know, if I want to try something, I can try something. Um, as long as it's not stupid, no one cares. Like they don't care. Right. I have, a, I, I have a nozzle that's uh, that will go unnamed um, that will be on the rig soon. <laughs> the Breslin distributor. I, yeah, that one too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. And it's, I mean, it, and there's a ton of, of really good guys that work there too. You know, I mean, um, I always tell people, you know, if, if you're, if your firefighters are ever complaining too much, I can get a couple of my guys to come over and, tell you how bad it really is you know it's like you just you you just can't make it there unless you're pretty tough because right you know you know no no toilet paper the, the very first time i went there they said bring toilet paper i said what for <laughs> <laughs> no that's good no 100 percent. i went down um after harvey i went down to houston uh we sent a task force down from oklahoma down to houston mainly to um work on first responders houses because they were all out working you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. cut, cut sheet rock out do, do yeah do, man, you know all that kind of stuff and we were hooked up with with some good people from houston that hooked us up with the church that uh but what as we visited the different firehouses while we were down there you know it was like 
holy shit, we have it good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you just need that perspective. You know, that that perspective, that bring toilet papers perspective. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no cleaning equipment. You know, right. no, I mean, just, just crazy. You know, break it. I, I, this again this is going to sound like an exaggeration, but we had a supply guy that would literally break a bar of soap in half, and you would have a, you would get a half a bar of soap. <laughs> <laughs> no air conditioning in the in the in the bunk room. Yeah, they were, had smoke ejectors up on the lockers, and uh, you know, someone complained to the chief, and the chief said. Oh, I didn't have air conditioning when I was on the job. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No. A bunch of sissies. Yeah. yeah that's it. Yep. yep. Oh. Lock, we used to lock the back door with a ratchet strap. It's all kinds of stuff. Oh, everything, wow. everything was bolted down with steel, like big bolts, you know, because people would steal stuff. Sure. Yeah. Woo. Oh, man. Here, but, I got one for you. Yo. Hey, uh, what did you and learn most when you went to the UK with Elkhart? Like what was the, what stuck out to you with that uh, experience? Um, well, first of all, um, what an absolute amazing opportunity. I mean, I was, I, I, I'm still pinch myself. Um, the, the, the one thing I can tell you is those guys are exactly the same, it's the same people. They just have funny accents. Um, <laughs> you know, same jokes, same, same everything, you know, um, very passionate people and, and very proud people, you know, um, they do things very different with water application and, um, and they're, you know, just, you know, just like anything, anytime someone comes to tell you something, hey, try this different thing. You're like, I don't know, man, what I'm doing is working. And so they did a lot of that which I, I completely understand. I, I get, I totally get it. And that's one of the things that I, I told them when I met those guys in Florida at Atrock. I said, you know, I'm not arrogant enough to think that I know everything and I, and you guys, and I would never tell you you're doing something wrong. And I also know that I can learn something from you guys um, because, you know, they, the same thing, they, they want to do, they want to do a good job. They want somebody to give them a high five and, and they want to, you know, feel like they've done something at the end of the day. Uh, but the water application thing, and I think some of them are starting to come around to that too. It's, it's, um, it, that is one of those things that it does work in the can and, and, um, they, uh, they made it work. So they, they had a whole heart, you know, wholesale adopted the Swedes, uh, stuff, you know, for fire attack. And, um, and that's why I asked the one guy, we were out to lunch one day. Um, a couple guys from London, and I said, "How did you guys go from, you know, a bunch of smooth bores during the Blitz to the 3D fire attack? Now that's not even that's not even like three generations, right? That's just a that's a very right. short amount of time." Yeah. And he said he really didn't know. He's like, "I I, really, I don't know." And then he was also one of the guys that said, "You know, they'll tell me again." He's he's an inner city London firefighter. He's like. They'll tell me to hit the ceiling, but you know, the fire's right there. I'm going to put the water on the fire. And they're like, no, hit the ceiling. He's like, but it's right there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think, you know, again, um, they, I would be willing to bet that they're doing stuff at the Academy and then they get out in the streets and they're like, Oh, no, we don't really do that all the time. Very yeah. familiar to different accents. Yeah. yeah. I'm telling you, man, those guys were their top dots. And I know that there was, there was some, some of the guys had animosity, you know, like when we were in London, there was a little bit of um, one of the guys almost ran over McGrail and, you know, like he was mad because we were there, whatever. And, you know, again, it, it would happen at my firehouse, depending on who was there that day, you know. So I get it. And and every, you know, again, the you know, uh, all the pranks, every, everything, you know, they, they had this, uh, the, the one Paddington station in London, they had a, a room for their gear to dry it and said the drying room and someone crossed out the D and put C, you know, the crying room. <laughs> <laughs> and they were, I mean, and again, the guys that we were involved with at the fire college, absolutely top notch. The guys, my um, man Gerard from uh, Australia is watching and he says he's watching anyway. Um, top notch. Um, and my buddy Dave Payton from, from UK Fire College, awesome guy. 
uh, John Chubb from uh, Dublin, retired from right. Dublin. Uh, awesome guy. He was involved in the UL as well. Um, yeah, it was a trip of a lifetime for sure. I'm hoping to go back. Um, you know, I don't, I don't have any um, aspirations of them inviting me back to teach or anything. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just going to go, you know, and hang out. Yeah. No, I love it. Uh, a couple, uh, one on uh, hydraulic ventilation. Brian Schwab wants to know: hydraulic ventilation is a lost art and a forgotten tactic on the fire ground. What are your thoughts on the subject? Oh, it's it's, it's absolutely. Um, you should be doing that. And again, I don't understand where that disconnect came from. That was that was absolutely drilled into me when I was young. You know, hit the room once the room is darkened down. Find a window, fog it out, right? Um, now, you can do it with a smoothbore. I know you can. Um, but uh, we, we just we can't get rid of it. I, there's nothing that I can do to – I mean, unless I put these guys in a chokehold, they're not going to ever get rid of the fog nozzle. So, um, so you know, but we've done it. And, that, and it's a great tactic. And it uses, you know, um, again, back to the UL stuff. Um Every single fire was put out with less than 300 gallons of water. And that included hydraulic ventilation out the window. If you've seen all the studies, they, I mean, all the test burns, that was done. It's on all the videos. Wow. So it's absolutely imperative. Do it every 10. Especially, and it's a bonus if a chief is standing out in the yard. <laughs> no, no offense. No offense, girl. <laughs> Anything to add to it? I've, I've yeah. thought both. I mean, hydraulic ventilation, it's unfortunate that people see it as a lost art. Um, it's not something that's taught for a lot of people, but it's very effective. You know, giving you another acronym, Ron, uh, my buddy Derek Roberts taught me Uncle Sven. So make the fire say uncle, search, ventilate, check for extension, notify command. And how we're <laughs> going to ventilate is hydraulic ventilation. So Uncle Sven. Uncle Sven. Yeah, Uncle Sven. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Stephen McCaffrey wants to ask, talking nozzles, because we talked about this a lot on the last scrap. For those who were there, what's your take on the hen nozzles, the high efficiency nozzle? Uh, we finally got the whole fleet switched to smooth bore, and now a new nozzle is coming out. What's your take? <laughs> is that the guy from Backdraft? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think it is. <laughs> it, there it is, is McCaffrey. Yeah, yeah. Even. Um, well, I I would like to, and I've, I've you know I've talked extensively about the nozzle with uh, with the, the two culprits, but um, I'm I have an open mind. Right, I have an open mind, and um, I. Well, I mean, I, I and I've talked to Ray too about this. Uh, you know, uh, getting some more data. Um, it's unfortunate that it wasn't around when they were doing the water application study with the UL because then you know because that instrumentation and those those experiments cost money. I mean, it, you know, it, it it costs money, and I don't think that. Um, the company that he's working for that's producing the nozzle has the ability to spend that much money on research and, and, and data collection. Um, but I mean, it kind of makes sense. I mean, it makes, you know, it makes sense. Um, I wouldn't take a hard line on any one of the nozzles because, um, as long as it's low pressure, um, I've, and not, I'm not saying that it's right, but I've seen a lot of fires go out with TFT 100 PSI automatics because I work in the land of TFT. I mean, right. the, the automatic nozzle was invented in Gary. Um, so, Thanks, Ron. Yeah, you're welcome. Appreciate it. I, wasn't, I was nowhere near the place. I wasn't even born. Engineering <laughs> seconds. I wasn't even born yet. Um, yeah. And, you know, it, it is what it is. And we... We had them. We we had, and it was kind of funny. I, you know, I joke about it. We had, we had two inch hose for a long time, and they had, they had the exact same nozzle on both, both you know, one hundred fifty or you know, inch and three quarter in the two inch, and they're like, oh, we got to pull the you know, big water, big fire. I'm like it's the same nozzle. <laughs> <laughs> you get the exact same amount of water, or, or you're just reducing friction loss, you know, and and that's that's one thing that there's. That is a road that, that <laughs> someone should have went down a very long time ago. Uh, the book's over there. Uh, Dave Fornell did. 
he did and no one was listening <laughs> yeah I don't, I don't get it so um you know and that was the the fortunate thing on my job was i was able to um apply 100 pounds of force over the course of 18 years right. and no one listened and then a guy came in and said the exact same words in the exact same order as i did and we switched to elkhart low pressure chief nozzles is what it is, man. Yeah. Was he taller than you, Ron? Uh, I think a little bit. Yeah, I just couldn't hear you down there. That's what it was. <laughs> That's right. That's right. No, <laughs> it's because I was from the inside. You know, they don't want to hear anything about yeah. you know. No, and there's a lesson there. There's a lesson yeah. there for everybody listening. A hundred percent. Like absolutely, there is a lesson there. Sometimes it takes a suitcase and the same message, man. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I mean, at least it. At least we've gotten away from those nozzles. And I want to know if the Stephen McCaffrey person is a real name or just a backdraft fan. So <laughs> please let me know in the chat if that's a real name or just a Facebook pseudonym. Because if not, it's one of the best firefighter names ever. Uh, John Shackelford coming at you. Ask Ron about the old way they did live fire training. I'm going to throw that at you. I'm going to hit the head. Kyle's going to run the show. Be right back. Hey, John, I don't know what you meant by that. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah right right um does he I, does he mean how i did it or does he mean how gary fire department did it i think or, maybe gary okay yeah well um there was you know that old school everyone did it i'm sure in every you know big city but um you know we had vacants and they would just light vacants on fire i mean um i've been a part of a lot of non 1403 compliant vacant burns with only you know one company there but um and then when i was in the academy uh there was a lot of a lot of mask appreciation days if you will you know like <laughs> they would tell you like hey go in there with no mask on you're gonna you know you're gonna really appreciate your mask after this but uh, <laughs> um i remember when i was in the academy we in gary and in, in the academy we were doing a, a acquired structure burn and uh one of the guys said hey take your glove off and feel the wall and they had built a fire like inside the it was a balloon frame home and so there's a fire raging in the stud bay and i burnt my hand like I, my hand was burnt and then and then like the fire progressed and and then like people are jumping out of windows and it was it was mayhem but um luckily nobody ever got killed i'm sure you know we've had a couple exposures but um Maybe a couple sprained ankles from jumping out windows, but <laughs> and, you know, again, you know that there was there was a lot of uh, a lot of that bravado and machismo, you know, back in the day that a lot of guys got away with, and they they would do that, you know, just to show you that they were tougher than you, and uh, you know, it's not right, but it happened. I'm sure it's ha I'm I'm sure you know anybody with any you know. 30 years on the job had seen it, you know, it's just, it's crazy. I went to an acquired structure. Uh, everyone will remain unnamed, unnamed, but, um, there was this guy, a retired guy from a large metropolitan department on Lake Michigan that had a whole bunch of people in this room and he lit this couch on fire. No one had air tanks and the stair, the exterior stairs were missing. So it was like a four foot jump. Like, I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> But uh, who told you, know. you this was a good idea? Right. Yeah, because someone showed him, I bet. Yeah. I bet they did. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Kyle, for being here. Because that's like yeah. usually I just have to leave the guest alone. So <laughs> I, I, yeah, I would have I would have told some jokes or something. No, 100 percent They've always handled it well. Uh <laughs> no, I'm coming uh size up on the radios and what we can do better and how how much of a fan you are of story time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is this is turning out to be very unpopular. But um, and then and I can see when I start to tell people, like if I go in depth and they kind of kind of start to agree with me, they'll still circle back and be like, yeah, but so <clears throat> I just don't think that a size up over the radio. You got to go again. No, <laughs> this dog is uh, oh. trying to burrow her, their way in here. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Sorry, Ron. No, it's okay. Um, 
But I just don't think that there's any value in telling this story about what you see when you get there because um, it's not going to change what I do. Like, um, and I've seen people get upset about it too. Like, oh man, you know, they said there was a, you know, 30 by 50 and it's actually 33 by 55. You know, it's like, come on, man, that doesn't even make any sense. Um, and then, you know, my point is that I can't do anything until I get there. It doesn't matter. And I know like, yeah, again, the way we should do it, it doesn't always work out. You know, no one follows all the rules, but um, it should be the first engine is fire attack, second engine is water supply, and the truck does everything else. So, really, what are you telling me? Like, I, I don't like if you say it's a two story, I'm still going to decide what line I'm going to stretch when I get there or what ladder I'm going to throw when I get there. I can't climb up on top of the rig halfway there and start pulling lines off, you know. <laughs> so, I don't, I mean. And like I said, everyone, everyone kind of agrees and then they'll circle back. But like, yeah, but man, you got, you got to tell them, you know, it's like, I don't, I don't get it. Like if I tell you we're going to work, like you should know, like mm -hmm. I'm going to get off the rig with my air pack on and my tools. And then I'm going to look at the building and I'm going to decide what I'm going to do. And no matter what you say, I'm still going to form my personal size up and I'm going to do what I think is right or, or, or complete the assignment that I was given. So if you give out assignments on the way there, like, hey, there's someone hanging out of the second floor window on the Charlie side. Could you get a ladder back there? Absolutely. Yeah, that's good information. That's good information. So, because, but, but still, I still can only mentally prepare for it. I can't take the ladder off until I get there. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. Now, is there a, is, is there a minimum? What, what's the minimum then on, on what should be transmitted? I'm asking. I love this. I, but I, I'm, I'm all for we it's a fire you know that's fine because i was um we were out um i was acting officer on truck one we were out collecting with the boot right and right. we get a we get a fire that's two blocks three blocks away from where we're standing apartment building occupied three story fire in the basement so um i was like oh shoot you know trying to get dressed trying you know trying to throw the the money filled boot in the in the rig and and we, um, I mean, I'm just buttoning the, the top button on my coat when we pull up. So I grabbed the mic and I said, we got a fire. And I threw it down and I got off the rig and I went to work. And no one, because it was occupied and people were, you know, fleeing the, the, the fire, no one said a word to me. No one, no one said, hey, man, that was a pretty dumb size up. Like, they all just got off the rig and went to work because there was so much to do. Yeah. So is it just uh, looking for something to train on to make, make, like, is it fixing a problem that doesn't exist or? I don't know. It just, it's just been, um, it's just been beat into everybody's heads. Like, sure. No, hundred percent. Even if I prove to you that it's, that it's crazy, everyone still like, yeah, it is crazy, but I'm still going to do it. Cause I mean, that's what, we got to do it. We got, you know, I got to do it. I'm not sure I agree a hundred percent with you. That's why I'm saying like, even me, I'm fighting my bias here saying, wait a second. You yeah, need to know yeah. if it's two story or not. You need to, you know, I, that's me fighting my bias as I talk to you, but I can't figure out how I feel about this. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's just been beat into your head that you have to say that. You have to say that because, um, so we they, they just had a, a a call for a fire today, and and uh, everyone got there, and everyone was given different size ups, right? So, um, I just don't think that there's a a big I don't think there's a big value to it is all. I, I just don't um, – because if someone – the first rig gets there, who does the size up for the first rig? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're, yeah, yeah, they're pulling up with nothing, right? Yeah, I think there's a fire at this location. Yeah, they said there was a fire here. And then if you get there and say, there is a fire, I'm like, okay, we're going to go to work. That's it. <laughs> so, so I came up with this, and then I realized I kind of backtracked. And I was like, wait a minute, the FDNY does it. They don't, they don't give size ups. You got 1075. Yeah. That's it. So do you think it ties back into just knowing your district better? I don't know. I just don't think anything would change, though. It's, okay. I mean, what's, what's going to change? It, again, you're, you're fighting the bias. You're, it's stuck no, in no, your No, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. It's beat in there. I'm accepting that I'm fighting a bias. I'm just, I'm just digging in. I love it. I love the yeah. question. I'm, I'm not offended. I hope you're not with my question. No, I'm not. No, 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 not at all. No, no. I absolutely love the pushback because, um, 
And I mean, if, if, if for some reason you change my mind, then I'm going right. to, you know, I'm going to keep saying that. And again, that's one of the things that um, I think is super important is an open mind because everyone closes their minds. Like, yes. You know, that was the thing with the UL. Everyone's like, Oh, those guys in the lab coats in the lab, you know, they're, sure. they're, you know, not, oh, no fires the same. It's like every single fire acts exactly the same. Given the yeah. same set of circumstances. They're all in boxes. Yeah. 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 Physics, you can't there. overcome physics. <laughs> There's nothing he can do. There's nothing he can do. He can be mad at gravity, but it still works. Like yeah. it's still working. Uh, so, no, I love it. I love it. And that's what I'm saying is even as I'm at, because you said it, you said people will agree with me and then they're like, but what about this thing that I've always believed? You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But what about this assumption? <laughs> yeah. And they, and they do circle back to it because, uh, I mean, I can't think of what would really change if, so the way that I present it is, you know, if I send you right now to one, two, three main street, supposed to be a place on fire, supposed to be a house on fire. And you get to one, two, three main street and there's absolutely nothing showing, but one, two, two across the street is ripping. Like it looks (laughs) like this. Like No, there's nothing here. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, there's a semi tube. No, it's, no, it's, it's ridiculous. So, um, <laughs> I, I just don't see any value. If there's if there is added value to it, I'll I'll take your word for it. But I know that if someone says, "Okay, or, you know, bring a hydrant," yeah, that's fine. I'll bring a hydrant, or you know, I'm second due. I'll bring a hydrant. That just seems natural to me, right? So, and then and then. I'm going to decide if I haven't give, been given any orders, I'm going to decide what I'm going to do. So if I, if I get there first and no one gave me a size up before I got there, they just said the house was on fire I get there. Yeah, it is on fire. We're going to shut the line. So why do I have to tell somebody? I mean, cause it goes, I mean, there's some places that will say we're stretching 150 foot of inch and three quarter line to the alpha side. Uh, we're going to force the front door. I like all this crazy stuff, like that means nothing to me. That changes nothing to what I do when I get there. No, it's, I love it. It's interesting because I, uh, yeah, absolutely interesting. Uh, actually, challenging how I teach certain classes on size up. So I actually love it. So thank you. Yeah, oh. one of the comments in the uh, chat was Stephen McCaffrey, the backdraft man himself. He <laughs> said uh, uh, some systems are built on what structure is, i.e., commercial versus residential. Uh, and I would say the dispatch is going to tell you that. I mean, the size of, I guess, just confirming, yep, it's a commercial building and yep, it's on fire. Come help me. Right. Um, and I don't have any problem with um, that. So if you pull up and you're like, uh, it's the Walmart. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and again, I don't know what that's going to change when you get there. Like, I don't get it. Like, if. Yeah. If you get, you know, if they say it's a, if you get there, you get sent to a rubbish fire and you get there and the, you know, the whole place is rocking. You're like, oh, uh, upgrade it. I'm going to need some more people. Or if you get sent to a house fire and it's a commercial building, you say, oh, commercial building, I need more people. Then they're going to be dispatched. I don't, I don't, I still don't. Um, again, that's the, yeah, but, yeah, but we got to do this. And it's like, I, I can't, I can't get my head around needing that. I'm, it's not going to change what I'm going to do as far as I know. And again, if someone wants to tell me how it's going to change what I, how I operate, I'll do it. But now we got to sit down. We got to sit down with a beer and figure out the absolute I, essentials. As soon as I finish this water, I'm going to crack open a beer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just so if you want to stick around, whatever. I'm Absolutely. Say, no, we're going to figure out the bare essentials of the, what needs to be in a scene size up. I was going to say, what is your, uh, mindset of what needs to be said when you get there i'm going to work like well situation. yeah yeah so so a lot of times uh guys will even in the past will say work and fire that's it so yeah. then the chief gets there and he, you know and that's okay for them to start talking about stuff that's fine um <laughs> <laughs> i'm serious though i mean um like i said if he if the chief is there and he's giving out orders that's fine right. I, I i love that that's even better yeah okay i know what i'm gonna do now um I feel like, and this is what I'll say. I'll say, I think that you need to confirm what building is burning. And if it's burning. One, it's on fire. So this one. 
<laughs> what what is on fire and if it's on fire so you could reverse that say is it actually on fire and what is it so okay so this one so this this fire this fire is a it's a pool hall it's it's uh three blocks from my firehouse so they sent us on a building fire and i look out the window look out the you know the, the door goes open and i look out i'm like oh man it looks like a car fire at the at the gas station it looked like because there's a gas station right across the street right there so I was like, well, it's a gas station, right? Just a car at the gas station. And then we rolled down there. I was like, oh, no, it's the pool hall, right? So, um, again, it didn't change what I was going to do, though. I, I had to – because of so there was so much fire and the chief kept saying oh, – there, there was a chief that was there. Uh, we need water supply, water supply, water supply. So I left my guy at the hydrant. And then I, – so I stretched our, our two-and-a-quarter pre-connect off, and that's me – right there with the two and a quarter so um and i'm not me i wasn't being heroic i was just you know whatever <laughs> so, water. yeah yeah right i mean i was just using yeah. the tank water right so yeah. i mean um i still don't i still don't think that it would change anything that's going to happen like no matter what i say if i say the dimensions what is that going to mean? Like if the chief doesn't tell you to bring a hydrant or, you know, if your, your SOP doesn't re include a hydrant on the first do or second do or third do or whatever, um, the orders, I'm okay with orders, but if you just say we got a fire, I think, I think that that's enough for me and, right. and I'll do it and again, because it's been beating my head and people get, people get all worked up about it. I'll say a two story frame, you know, fire on two, whatever. I'll, I'll say it for them. And it's not for me. No, no. I'm, I, again, I'm I'm not trying to be obtuse or anything. It's just I, like you said, you're challenging my biases, and I'm like trying to make sure that I'm I'm running it through my matrix, saying, "Is he right? Holy crap, is he right?" And I keep running it through with the yeah buts. <laughs> it's hard, man. <laughs> I know. It's hard. I, you know. I've. I hope everybody listening runs it through their yeah buts. So yeah, I've I've spent you know I've spent a good portion of my career talking about biases, you know, because. Right. It's, it's huge you know i mean uh it's very it's fascinating um that that we do have all of that i mean it works it, it it's it's there for a reason but um some of them are bad right sure but if you don't like you don't like somebody that doesn't look like you that's a very bad bias right yeah. but but in the old days when you were in the cave if you saw somebody new, they were going to steal your deer and you'd die, right? Die, right. right. So it's it's stuck in there, but and that's no, it's what I'm with the, the, and I think it was Aristotle. Aristotle, like forever ago, said it's the uh, the the mark of an educated person to be able to look at something and 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 even though you disagree, examine the merits of it, you know, without be, you know coming to blows. Uh, and that's a that's a horrible paraphrase, but uh, absolutely what we're talking about. You sounded just like him. Yeah. <laughs> I would say the biggest benefit would be the chief. I mean, as the chief, you know, I, I treat chiefs like babies, you know, babies cry when they're hungry. Chiefs are hungry for information. So like if you feed him information, he's not going to cry wanting it, you know? So I would mean, I would assume that, you know, the chiefs are going to be the ones that are pushing it. Like, what do you got? What do you see? How big is it? No, like, that's well, very drive a little faster. And I you'll can't, be able to see I can't, exactly I can't what see I'm a thing. It's smoky in here. I nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> water, saying, nothing as it looks like this chief I don't know. <laughs> that was one of the worst things is when you step off the engine and you're you're now stuck to the front yard we we discussed that today talking mm -hmm. about that today you're stuck in the front yard and you're no longer in control of that information and that's one of the hardest things is to step back and say no give them time yeah you hated it when they called you every two seconds yeah. when you were inside so why are you doing it now but you are yeah starting well, that, that information but see now that's see that's different so okay. so if you if you say you know if you if it, things are looking bad and you say how's it going in there i'm like hey i think we're winning what does it look like out there chief and you say uh come on out i'm gonna yeah. come out so that's that's good information i'm just saying when i pull up I'm like oh it's 30 by 20 it's got black shutters um <laughs> looks like they could use a roof yeah <laughs> Yeah, car in the driveway, mailbox is open. <laughs> yeah, the like mailbox it. is open. I like it. I, I, really, I really do like it. I really do. And you've answered yeah. the question beautifully on the on the needing information. Yeah. 
making sure that the information from the inside is matching the information from the outside is, is a much different story than the initial size up. Oh, absolutely. A- yeah. Absolutely. And again, that initial size up wouldn't change it. Like I said, if you pulled up to the address and the place across the street was on fire, you wouldn't say, ah, we're in service. You know, <laughs> you, said, you said one, two, three. <laughs> it's obviously not here. It's obviously not here. <laughs> this is somebody that place across the street, though. <laughs> Uh, what do you got, Kyle? What do, before I move on. Oh man, uh, no, nothing. All much. right, then I'm going to move on to book or books that you think firefighters should be reading. Doesn't have to be firefighting books, just books in general. Oh, well, you, yeah. Well, we're we're huge book fans. Yeah, I I, I enjoy reading too. I look at pictures sometimes. Yeah. Um, uh, you you absolutely have to read report from Engine Company eighty two. You just you just have to read it. Again, there's perfect size up. You know he's calling a second alarm and it was just a tree in the courtyard. <laughs> <laughs> um, Deep Survival is a really good one. Good Thinking balls. fast and slow is really good. Uh, Kinnaman and Tversky, it's really good stuff. Um, what was the last one? Uh, the Thinking Fast and Slow. Okay. Okay. Uh, by Danny Kahneman and whoever the other guy. Yeah, um, no, yeah, Kahneman and, and uh, yeah, the system one. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, really good stuff. Um, and then I just, I just got the one from uh, Talib. Um, oh, shoot, I forgot what it is. I have to get back to you. I'll remember it in a second. Something about mistakes, whatever. But yeah, it, just the stuff that the stuff that deals with, um, you know, how you think, uh, because again, biases are bad, <laughs> or sometimes they're good. Um, shortcuts are good, but um, there's flaws in that too, right? And people don't people don't know it. There's there's literally, you know, you can tell them about the system one and system two, and you can. Uh, that's one of my favorite things is show somebody a, a picture that gives them the shortcut that's wrong. And right, we have to figure it out. It's like, man, it's hurting my brain. It's like that's that's what's supposed to happen. Right, it's physically painful. That's how we function. Out. That's how we function as human beings. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know, there's, um, you know, and then when you talk about um, firefighting, uh, fire stream management um, by Fornell is is uh, imperative reading uh, if you can get it. I know some people have a hard time getting it. Second um, coming out soon. Yeah, that's what I heard. Do um, you know when? Uh, very soon. It's in the technical review phase right now. Okay. What do you know? What they changed? Have you heard what they? What, uh, what they I heard that there is a new nozzle stream in the chapters of the books that is currently being discussed in multiple platforms. Ah. Okay. That that'll be good. Um, and then. Fireground Tactics by Emmanuel Freed from the '60s. I think yeah. that's important, you know, because because you can see you can see some of those things that did change for a good reason. Um, you know, the whole breathing air off the fog nozzle doesn't work. <laughs> Believe it or not, um, but there's a lot of good. There's a lot of stuff, you know, just like with the uh, Braidwood stuff. You know that um, there's there's stuff that still applies. And Full circle that, yeah. that has yeah that has. It stood the test of time. I love it, man. I absolutely love it. I love the brain stuff too, man. Yeah. Man. Yes. We're going to have to, again, when we get those beers at some point, when you quit drinking water, I I'm just gonna... did. I just oh, did. Just now. Yeah. Just now. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to get stewed and start fighting, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to the five questions for firefighters. This is something we've been doing since almost the beginning, almost the beginning. And uh, it started out as the five questions for firefighters. It, it evolved over time and became the five questions for firefighters version two. We are currently at the five questions for firefighters version 3.2. It's the third iteration of questions asked over the history of the scrap. So um, my question to you is, are you ready for the five questions for firefighters version 3.2? I'm as ready as I'm going to be. I, I looked him over, but the, uh, the rules are this, is there are no correct answers. There are only your opinions. All right. And the points are arbitrary. They're assigned by me with the assistance of my lovely assistant. 
Oh, I, I was unaware I was going to be scored. This is even better. Yes, and we should have brought cards. We, we yeah. should have brought cards, the 9.5. If, if we'd have thought it through, we would have brought cards. And, of course, the audience is always uh, a scoring factor. Right. So here we go. Question one, Ron, what is the skill that has carried you through your fire service career? Having an open mind. Mm. That for sure. Hands down. Hands down. I mean, some of the other skills are important, but having an open mind and being able, you know, question, not necessarily question authority, but, you know, have questions, questions, uh, the, uh, knowing the, you know, finding out the why. I love it. And I don't know how Kyle feels. I'm going to give you max points, max points, <laughs> max points, but mainly because you tied it back into that beautiful Aristotle quote <laughs> earlier. Yes. 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 100%. <laughs> Number two, it's job town. It's time. You're in route and responding. Think of the scene from backdraft where he slaps that cassette into the, te- into the tape deck. What song are you playing in route? Well, since there's no uh, recorded version available of, of a long size up, I'm going to have to say <laughs> the, the Ghetto by Too Short. That's one of my favorites. Ghetto. Yeah. And if anybody anybody watching knows about the video, they, they'll know they'll know why I picked that. <laughs> <laughs> two for two, max points. Number three, I love this question. I really do. Um, what is your and I've laughed so much tonight. I think I've laughed more than any scrap ever. What is your favorite fire service tradition? Uh helmets. Traditional <laughs> helmets. Is that I is that what you're talking about? Is that am uh, I getting dude, sure, that? there's no right or wrong answer? Leather helmet, man. Yeah. Leather helmet. I'll let you answer. Yeah, max points, man. Max points. Absolutely. <laughs> max points. Absolutely. Uh, honestly, though, if I would think of anybody that would have tried the Euro. Did you try the Euro while you were over there in the UK? <laughs> I yeah, I've tried it before. I, yeah, I've tried them and yeah. I, I did. I put it on. I put it on. Yeah. It's not, I mean, it's not horrible. And again, I, uh, I don't want to interrupt, but um, that's one of the discussions that I had with the guy. You know, it's like you're. This is not a problem that that needs fixing. There's no. I don't know anybody that has ever said, "Oh, he would have lived if he had a plastic <laughs> helmet on." You know, I could have stuck like, his head in that small place. <laughs> yeah, I could. Yeah, I could have easily gotten out. You know, like that old. It, again, there's these myths that go around. You know, like the guy that got hung up by his helmet. You know, and died because he got. You know, because his chin strap didn't break away. You know, it's like. Yeah. Or, you know, there's so many that everyone. Oh, I I know a guy that did that. No, you don't. You really don't. <laughs> you don't know that guy. You don't know that guy. You know, it's, it's like the guy in fifth grade that was able to swing so high he went up over the swing set. <laughs> he didn't do it. Yeah, he didn't do it. Tie it back. <laughs> Fixing a problem that we don't have. It's there's you know there's no people aren't you know dying from injuries because they have a bad helmet or a good, you know, surviving because they have a great helmet on. Like I just, you know, again, those guys have their biases about that. And they're like, Oh, it's the greatest thing in the world. I don't know. I don't think it is. And I like the fact that you tied it right back to open mindedness because you said you did try it. I did try it. Yeah. I tried it. I tried, I I've tried everything. I tried their, I tried their thing, the thing I tried it. Ooh, I was going to ask you that earlier. Were you actually in the can when they did any of that in the UK? And no, what was your observation? No. I was actually, I had the pleasure of escorting a European team uh, with American Tactics. Nice. And they enjoyed it. And they came out wet and soggy. Yep. yep. And they said that they didn't get steam burned. And that's oh, when nice they, all the guys outside are like, oh my God, all that steam. And they're like, no, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> no, actually, Because, that. you know, the they're owning the space you know come on yeah but, but they but again that's a big hurdle for those guys to ever sure overcome that's it's, worse than the whole scene size up bias way facing. worse than the size up thing no no I'm, I'm with you yeah were they able to teach you anything about fire behavior like oh they, man those guys go those guys yeah they're riding a submarine to the deep dive man yeah where they're way into it they they go way and they and they do accountability they're probably that's probably the best accountability i've ever seen and oh, wow. the most like you could stop a guy that's in proby school and ask him about fire behavior and he's gonna blow your mind man those guys know that stuff man for sure 
I think they have that's a, their thing. They have an extreme understanding of fire behavior and our water application, in my personal opinion, and I'm sure yours as well is a little bit better. It's a greed based, you know, it's better for us, better for trap civilians. And if we could come together and bring those two together, I think we'd be unstoppable. But I don't know that ego will allow us to do that. And yeah, I, yes. And um, th those guys are, they're fighting a bunch of construction stuff too. It's not, it's not you can't just give them a smooth bore nozzle and fix their problems. I mean, it, there's a lot of other stuff going on. They have building construction problems like crazy. Yeah. One, one stairwell in high rises, one, yeah. and it's not very big either. <laughs> mm. Mm. It's a problem. Sorry to derail the. No, I love it. Fire. That's what it, that's what makes it so great. I absolutely love it. Uh, leather helmets. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Max points three for three, no pressure. We're number four. Um, this one's on the clock, okay? Because you only get one minute to answer it, okay? And um, long story short, we had to put it on the clock because people were meandering and just and they were given honorable mentions and, and we need to. Oh yeah, it. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So here it is. Who are the four people you would put on your Mount Rushmore of the fire service? Go. It's going to take a minute to say that I'm going to leave a lot of people out. There's only four spots. So I'm going to say Andy Fredericks. Um, do I have to justify why I'm giving him the... You got a minute. Because <laughs> uh, 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 I met him in um, 97, and he came to the firehouse a couple of times. He was a big fan of Gary. Um, uh, and he talked good about us at the firehouse, too. Um, number two is going to be Ray McCormick, because he's helped me with so much stuff. He, you know, uh, I can't thank him enough. Um, uh, along with Mike Champo, because again, uh, helped me with a ton of stuff. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't even be the, I wouldn't have training seconds if it wasn't for champ. And, uh, you know, and Ray got me a, a lot of other places. And then finally captain Bill Hanna, uh, from my job who, uh, taught me all the right stuff as opposed to those guys that teach you how not to be an officer. Beautiful. With time to spare, not a ton of time. So <laughs> wait, I can time. make, I can make, <laughs> make those seconds. Oh, bro. That's so many time. training moments in those seconds. <laughs> Fredericks, McCormick, Champo, Hannah. Yeah. I get it right. Beautiful brother. Yeah. Max points 100% for coming in under time. <laughs> absolutely. Love, and I love the, uh, I Andy, Andy Fredericks absolutely is the, uh, number one person uh, mentioned in the Mount Rushmore. And the fact that you had a personal connection with him loving Gary and everything like that, man. Absolutely. I love that. I really do love that. Yeah, we had a – actually, they were at the firehouse in the morning, and we caught a fire, and they were taking pictures. He was he was doing something over in Schaumburg, and the guy was driving around. And then um, we had a, a fire at night, and we had a problem with the hydrant. The hydrant was, was broken. And so I was – I exited the second floor to the um, – relative safety of the porch roof and they were standing in the street. I'm like, you guys getting this? You getting this? <laughs> oh man. Final question. It's the question. Hey, uh, that, oh, sorry. Hey, go, go. Gerard Mann's in the chat, buddy. And he said, uh, when you did your American tactics in the can, I'm assuming that he's commenting on that is the coldest yeah. he's ever been in a can. Yeah. Yeah. He was there. Yeah. He was there. So shout out to Gerard. Oh, he's eight. Hey, Again, I said it in the beginning, top notch. Yeah. He's a gentleman. I enjoy his company. Final question. It's the question that's never changed since the beginning of the scrap. Heavy fire, searchable space. Would you rather be assigned to the nozzle or first in on VES? Oh, <laughs> I know. It's a trick question. Uh, I was waiting on this one. <laughs> it's the same question. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the search, man. I'm gonna go with the search. I spent most of my time on a truck. Um, not, not that we can, uh, again, because of our staffing, we've never really been. Uh, you can't just like strictly just be on the truck. So, sure. Um, and then, you know, transfers are punishment. So. Um, <laughs> You know, they, they send you where you don't want to go. You want to be at the airport, they send you to the squad. You want to be at the squad, they send you to the airport. You know, it's, it's, it's the same. same I love thing. it. 
I love the answer. I love the reason why. And that makes it officially Ron Smith five for five. <laughs> yes. Max points. Yeah. <laughs> and that officially makes it 290. Yeah, there you go. 219 <laughs> scraps in the books. Yes. Hey, yes, brother. five for five. <laughs> That's right. I want to see a <laughs> training seconds on this. I'm glad you called it search because I watched a short documentary about VES one day. And, I did too. And I learned that 100% of trapped occupants are found inside the structure. <laughs> that is my favorite training seconds. I almost wanted to bring it up earlier, but since Kyle brought it yeah. up. I caught, I caught some heat from that. It, like this guy, mm. one guy started pushing back. I'm like, what do you not understand? This is not serious. You're like I'm, I mean, I can I can be serious, but this is not serious. Well, man, you know, and he just kept going on. I was like, what? And he was from Canada. I said, this is getting lost in translation, brother. <laughs> when you change it to your language, you you think I'm being serious, and I'm not. <laughs> oh man. That way. Just to rate, keep erasing letters. So it was just down to search. And I yeah. Love yeah. It. yeah, it's just search. I'm telling you, it's just search. Because <laughs> when when they put the slide up that said forcible entry is ventilation, I was like, ah, I got you. I got you. No more VES. <laughs> Never again. I wondered about my, my phrasing on my fifth question. I honestly did. But you, you answered it with yeah. search. Search, yeah. Yeah. I'd rather be on the search. I, you know, I and I don't. It's not like I get the nozzle anymore. I just I point flashlights and stuff, but I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that's not a good time too. It is, you know, the knob is the job. I I took the I did not take this job to throw ladders. I did not. I took the job to squirt water. That was the that was the idea, you know. Uh, I thought we were doing it a lot more often than we, you know. Johnny and Roy had us going a lot more to a lot more fires, but um. You know that's that's why I joined the fire service was to put the water on the fire, and then I found out the truck had a bigger district. I'm like, wow, well, I shouldn't be on the truck. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to go to more places. <laughs> yeah, right. A much bigger district. We got to go. I love it, and that officially makes it 219 in the books. Ron Smith, thank you for sharing your evening with us yep. and the audience. Uh, if someone wants to, someone wants to get a hold of you, what's the best way to do so? Uh, the best way to do so would be uh, on Facebook, probably. Um, I can be. You can email me at gfdtrk4 at Yahoo. Um, but there's a lot of stuff in that one, but uh, I'll answer it. Or you know, reach out on Instagram. Anything, any training seconds platform is fine. Uh, I'll be at FDIC. I'm right. easy to find. Be there all week. Beautiful. Uh, let me see. Housekeeping. Go to firehousevigilance.com. Become a vigilante. Join. I didn't. Here's the deal. Today, Kyle's been teaching in my city all day. That's why he's here. That's why he's the co-hosting. He's been teaching class in my. And I said, "Hey, you want to come co-host the scrap?" He said, "Yes, I do." So we were <laughs> in an extremely time compressed. And I, I called Ron and said, "Hey, do you mind if Kyle uh, co-host?" He said, "No, not at all. It'll be a blast." And so, anyway, long story short is I did not even get to ask Ron if he would be a part of the scrap after party. So I'm going to assume he's going to hang out for 20 minutes afterwards. But I still have a beer left. Him. Yeah. Okay. It, we're going to switch to water at that point. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so vigilantes, scrap after party here in a few short seconds. When the, when the scrap ends, I will post the link for everybody. Uh, and, and here's the deal. The vigilantes always promise that they're going to bust the chops of the guest. They never have to this point. But tonight may be the exception. It's fine. I have, I, there's a lot of guys, I don't know, I don't know if they'll come in, but uh, there's a lot of guys that said they were going to watch it. They're chop busters. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I feel, I fully, I feel expected, like, I fully expected a lot if more. There was a chance that. that it was going to happen. I feel like this is the one. <laughs> Other than that, man, if you're not a vigilante, go become a member. Firehousevigilance.com. I won't, I won't belabor the point. Here's the deal this is a very important one to me. Um, there are 14 days left. 14 days in a few hours, give or take, until November 27th, Cyber Monday. That is when firemanship uh, tickets go on sale. And so, uh, man, mark it on your calendars. Be ready. Firemanship, it's one of the biggest things that's going to happen. Uh, mark your calendars. That's all I got. My brother, Ron Smith, thank you for being such a phenomenal guest. Kyle Romagus. Awesome co-host. Awesome co-host. 
Hey, yeah. could, I, could I say also, I uh, didn't mention it, but um, the Yard Foundation, if you guys could uh, join up. And I know sometimes those guys have mean jokes and it hurts, but uh, they do such good stuff, man. They've, they do such good things for the for firemen in need, um, the Yard Foundation. You don't have to participate and hit it hard from the yard. I get it. It's, again, mean jokes, but um, but the stuff that they do in the Yard Foundation is just absolutely phenomenal. I and love you get hey. the t-shirts. 100%. Like we discussed it, like not even, not even 30 minutes before we went on. I was like, we're going to bring up the yard or not. I was like, dude, I love the yard. But I also, I also, sometimes I'm like, Ooh, yeah, but no, I love the yard. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. 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 A lot of people get hurt and I get it. And you know, and death threats are made, but I don't, I, and contrary to popular belief, I do not have a fake profile on that page. <laughs> I just don't comment. Cause I know I'm scared too. <laughs> no, I, I have a shirt. I w- want the be fireman. It's one of my favorite shirts. <laughs> and, on, and on the back it says the Yard Foundation, and it is a phenomenal organization on the yard and yep. what they do. Yep. So yep. And you know, again, you don't have to participate with that other stuff, man. You don't. You don't. <laughs> All right. Thank you for mentioning. It. I, I wasn't going to bring it up, but thank you for mentioning it because yep. it is a good uh, charity. Uh, that vigilantes, I will post it in the, in the private group. If you're going to be in there for the after party, it'll be starting in a few short minutes. Uh, Ron Smith, uh, he's going to come on, be roasted audience. You make the scrap magical. I say this every time, but it is a hundred percent the truth without your questions, without your involvement, the scrap doesn't exist. So thank you for tuning in live each and every week. Uh, everybody give a shout out to Kyle. He's always there, but today he's hanging out on camera and, uh, being the badass co-host that he is. Uh, thank you for tuning in live. I love you all. Remember, mutts don't scrap. I hope the tones stay silent unless it's burning. Everybody, stay safe out there.